Sports Snippets, Dennis Sullivan. Hope all is well. If you're watching this video, I hope you're having a, a wonderful weekend as I am putting this video together for you. Late night on a Saturday to discuss the Thursday night football game between the Cincinnati Bengals and Miami Dolphins. Dolphins suffer their first loss of the season, 27 to 15. Of course, the big story, which is obviously more important than the game's outcome, is the health of Tua and, of course, uh, the injury that he suffered. Now, <clears throat> for those of you, uh, as I get started here, those of you that have seen my videos in the past, what I do, or one of the things I like to do is recap uh, Miami Dolphin games and share my thoughts on those games and I plan on doing the same thing uh, with this video but obviously much more important uh, than the game was the injury suffered by Tua. I'm hearing some positive reports as far as how he's feeling but um, I even heard a potential timetable for his return I really think, I don't even know if that's a, a topic right now as far as like a timetable of when he would return. Obviously, the most important thing right now is, is his health and that he feels uh, like himself and he, he is, um, you know, in good health. So I just wanted to mention that uh, as we get started. And I uh, hope that he takes as much time as needed and cer uh, certainly does not uh, come back anytime um, or feel that pressure to, that he has to come back or anything like that. The, two, you know, the game goes on, and after all, it is just a game at the end of the day, right, guys? So to get started, Dolphins, you know, I didn't feel good about this one. Even though the season's been tremendous so far, Dolphins fall to 3-1 and one with the loss. Bengals improve to 2-2 two and two with the win. You just don't really, as far as the outcome, I, I didn't feel like I normally would feel going into this game. That you get a handful of games like that where you're just like, mm, you're coming off a giant win. I mean, maybe the biggest win the Dolphins have had in like 10 years or more. <laughs> that was a huge win against the Bills. And now you're on a short week after the emotional victory, two-point win at home. And now on a short week, four days later, you're in Cincinnati on the road on Thursday Night Football. So, it's a 12-point loss. Joe Burrow played well. The Bengals had trouble running the ball, if you notice. Uh, Mixon, that's Joe Mixon, is a very good running back. He didn't even average three yards a carry, 61 yards and a touchdown, but on 24 carries... So I thought that was a big positive for the Dolphins' defense. Burrow added six yards on five carries. Samaje Perrine did not rush for any yards. He had a carry. But it was Burrow throwing for 287 yards, two touchdowns. And Tyler Boyd added a 23-yard completion from the wide receiver position. So Burrow and the passing game made the difference in this one, a 12-point victory for the Bengals. T. Higgins was spectacular, 124 yards on seven receptions and a touchdown. Jamar Chase, 81 yards, four catches. Tyler Boyd, 47 yards, two catches. Hayden Hurst, a touchdown reception on three catches for 27 yards. Mitchell Wilcox, a catch for 18. Mixon out of the backfield had 13 yards on four catches. So... The Bengals really are kind of, you know, they, they, they got started slow. Now they've won two in a row. They will play next on Sunday Night Football, actually, on the 9th. So that's week five in Baltimore. That's an interesting game. Um, Bengals, with all that talent and obviously the explosive wide receivers in Burrow, I do like. You hear some criticisms every now and then that the, the Bengals are more run-oriented than, than they should be. I agree with, I think that's what balances them out. You have a good running back in Joe Mixon. You should be not shying away from the run really regardless, but especially when you have a good running back like Mixon, I think their strategy is actually I 
I think it's very uh, clever. I mean, it's strong. I, I, I think they're very well coached, are the Bengals. And obviously, they're just the AFC, uh, the AFC champion, returning AFC champion team that played in and lost in last year's Super Bowl. Bridgewater, so guys, I mean, he'll make his first start next week against the Jets. That's who the Dolphins will play next. That is on the 9th of October in New York or New Jersey. Um, that will be an interesting game. Between Tua and Bridgewater, they threw for a little over 300 yards. Bridgewater, 14 of 20, 393 yards, touchdown to interception. I don't have a list of all the backup quarterbacks in the NFL in front of me right now, guys, but my guess is that Bridgewater is not, is if not the best backup in the game. He is certainly right up there. This is a was a very good decision made by the Dolphin organization to pick him up. As a backup, he is a proven player in the league. Uh, he's right around 30 years old, I believe, or will turn 30 perhaps later this year. I was looking that up uh, just a few days ago. Some positives for the Dolphins. The running game wasn't bad. Raheem Mustard, and they got him established with 69 yards on 15 carries. You got to like that. Chase Edmonds was quieter, though. Six yards on five carries. Bridgewater added an 11-yard carry. Tyreek Hill had a carry for minus one yards. Hill was spectacular uh, as a doing his main job, and that is as a wide receiver with 10 catches, 160 yards. Had a tremendous game. Trent Sherfield, 55 yards on four carries. The Bengals did a nice job on Jalen Waddell, who has been nothing, everything but quiet his first three games. He had a tremendous start to the season. It's held the two catches on 39 yards. Mike Gusecki, two catches, 23 yards. Edmonds out of the backfield, two catches, 14 yards. But he did have a touchdown reception. you got to like Edmonds that he finds the end zone. He is a, um, a nice talent added by the Dolphins. Mustard out of the backfield, 12 yards on two catches. The Dolphins did effectively get the running backs involved in the passing game with Edmonds and Mostert each catching two passes. It's a little bit better than they did in week three. Uh, that was my only criticism of the Dolphins in week three against the Bills is that they did not get the running backs involved in the passing game. They did a better job of that in week four, thus, although suffering the loss. So guys, um, Dolphins move on from here. This will be Bridgewater's first start as a Miami Dolphin in week number five. Uh, Zach Wilson's back for the Jets, so that can uh, you know that can make things more difficult. Although Joe Flacco is not a bad, he's ne well he's been a good player his whole career. He's still not a bad option for the Jets. See what happens, guys. Uh, you know, everything's in perspective now. We just uh, hope for and continue to look for good reports regarding Tua's spirits and his progress moving forward. Enjoy. If, you get, if you're watching this on Saturday night or early Sunday, Sorry about that, guys. I had a little bit of a, of a uh, pause there. If you're watching this on early Sunday, my screen went blank there for a second. I do apologize. If you're watching this on early Sunday, um, this video that is, there's the 930 game Eastern, Minnesota, and the Saints. So that is a London game, I believe. I heard the other day also that the NFL is playing a game in Germany. I just heard this uh, from a acquaintance of mine didn't read it anywhere so I'll take his word for it. I don't know what exactly what week that is but that's very interesting so enjoy a football uh, on the 2nd of October we will catch up again soon and bye for now